Blue Ridge and Equinonc. I am here, um, I'm Amy Sheck. Um, I was a PC in 2002 and Council Chief of Blue University in 2008. And I'm here with two of my former campers, Julia Lazarus and Lindsay Simon, who Hello. Um, were Counselor Chiefs last summer of Blue Game Day and Gray Marvel. Um, and we're here to talk a little bit about their camp experience and what it was like to grow up at Blue Ridge. Um, yeah. So, Lindsay and Julia, one of you is the oldest in your family um, to start camp, and one of you was the youngest in your family to start camp. And I'm sure that shaped your experiences tremendously. For me, I was the only one and I had major family connections in camp, so I kind of don't remember a time when there wasn't a Blue Ridge in Equinonc. Um, so why don't you guys tell us a little bit about your um, beginnings, your Blue Ridge beginnings? Yeah. Uh, should I start because I'm the youngest? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so I'm the baby of the family and I have an older sister, Lauren Lazarus. I, I don't, you might have heard of her. Mm -hmm. um, and an older brother, Ben, and he actually went to Equinonc. Um, so my sister is six years older than me. So she's the one who went through the touring of all the camps, you know, figuring out which sleepaway camp is best for her. Um, and for me, I grew up going to visiting days. Um, I don't remember many visiting days considering I was like three, four years old. Um, but my decision to go to Blue Ridge, it was kind of just, you know, a given. I never really thought about it. Um, and it was, it was just kind of like, that's what I was doing when I hit lower soft age, I was going to Blue Ridge. And I'm so thankful, thank you, Lauren, for choosing Blue Ridge because I really can't imagine myself anywhere else. I really can't. Yeah, so I have the entirely opposite story because <laughs> I'm the oldest in my family. I'm the oldest sibling, I'm the oldest cousin, I'm the oldest everything. Like no one before me was giving my parents any guidance besides word of mouth. And I remember sitting down in my living room and back then we had to watch like these tapes of camps. Like there was no like the website that you could do like the 360 tour. Like that was not a thing. <laughs> and so we watched, we each picked a tape. We each picked a camp from the tapes. And my dad was actually the one who picked Aquanonca Blue Ridge and said, I have a really good feeling. And honestly, I wasn't sure. How could I know? And I picked a different camp. I was like, no, this is the one I want to go to. And I ended up touring that camp and it was not for me. And I toured Blue Ridge and I remember, actually Amy gave me my tour. So crazy. Amy did <laughs> my tour and taught me how to lead on my tour. Yeah. So if you ever see me leading the way that Amy leads, it's because of that. And um, Probably. I remember I had an afternoon tour and we had just missed lunch. And we heard, saw every, we heard it and we saw everyone coming out of the mess hall, but like we didn't know what was going on. And I had a friend who toured that morning and she said to my mom, like, you have no idea what just happened in there. That is a camp for Lindsay, like this, that, and the other thing. And we were sold and that was it. The rest is history. So thanks. Thank you. <laughs> and we should note that in 2006, their first summer, um, I was a counselor in Julia's bunk and Lindsay's bungalow. Um, and I have very, very vivid memories of them both just jumping right into camp and <laughs> loving everything about it, each in their own way. And just being like, yeah, these guys are the real deal. What was the first moment that you thought to yourself once you were in camp, like, yeah, this is a place I'm going to be at for a very long time and keep coming back? I mean, for me, I guess it was kind of like an addiction. Um, <laughs> I am obsessed with camp. Everyone you are? Who knows, you knows that. Yeah, just a little. Um, I can not stop talking about it. And everything I do in life leads back to something I did at camp and talking to my camp friends and I will sit there and giggle at my phone 24 seven at school and my friends are like, who are you talking to? And I'm just like, you won't get it. Mm -hmm. And for me, I wanna be a teacher. So going to the education field, this was the perfect place for me. And I knew that I would learn more at camp for my future than anywhere else. I mean, for me, I, I never really had that like thought as a camper, like, yeah, I'm going to stay around, around for a while, you know, it just kind of was a given I'd be coming back year after year. I mean, at least until PC summer. Um, but living on the other side of Blue Ridge, camper summers are just amazing and so special. Um, but the counselor side is also like 
something that's so different, but also so meaningful. And I think the time that I really thought that, yeah, I'll be back for a long time was summer of 2016. Um, it was my second that year as a counselor. Summer. Yep, that summer. And I worked with that summer. <laughs> oh yeah, it was a great yeah. summer. <laughs> it was just, <laughs> it was the best summer. Everyone says it. Um, but I just remember we were going back, we, me, Lindsay, and another girl in our age group, and we didn't have anyone else our age there. So it was definitely weird at first, but that was the summer we really realized that we became friends with so many people, older and younger, people we never thought we'd be friends with. International and staff really, and campers. Yeah. And, yeah. And it was just one of the most like eye-opening, amazing summers. And I'm like, I need to keep doing this for as long as I possibly can. Yeah. Yeah. Here um, I am. And Lindsay also talked about how um, like everything at home that she thinks about and does is kind of related to camp. And I should add that Lindsay and Julia are actually three six fives. They <laughs> grew up together. That means they are with each other three hundred sixty five times. Um, kind of crazy. Days a year. Um, yeah. And they grew up together um, in the same town and went to the same. Um, elementary schools and middle school, high school, um, and they went to college together. They actually went abroad to the same place um, <laughs> when they were juniors in college. So they've kind of got this. I get a little sick of you. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of have this reputation as um, two people that have just grown up together and have this really close bond with each other. Yep. Um, so at camp, when you're a PC, um, you get to lead the camp. You're the oldest campers um, in a variety of ways. Um, you're chiefs and captains of all different teams. Um, when we're singing in the mess hall, you stand up on a chair and you get to lead every song um, that's being played. And the campers basically look up to you. Um, and I want to know, because PC Color is a culmination of your years at Blue Ridge. Um, it is when we celebrate you as someone who's been through camp. It's kind of like a graduation um, sort of activity. Um, tell us about your PC Color War. PC Color War is something as a camper, I mean, everyone can relate to this. It's something that each year you have a Color War, you're just constantly looking up to these pieces and being like, I cannot wait until I'm a PC and I can experience what they're experiencing. I mean, Throughout the whole summer, it's, you're looking up to the PCs, you know, you're envying that they have all of these leadership roles, they have so much spirit, you know, everyone's, everyone wants to be the PCs and do what they do. And for us, I mean, PC color war is something that I will never forget. It is really the culmination of all of my years at Blue Ridge. Um, I mean, for me, it was so special. I was upper senior chief of Grace Seussical 2013. And although that didn't make it like the most special, you know, it's special for every PC, but seeing my name on that paper really did validate that who I am as a person really does show and that people really do notice and look up to me. Um, so, you know, be, me being in my schmata and like little kids that like, I don't really know that well would come up to me and being like, what's my name, Julia? And I'm like, well, Oh, like, I don't know, you know, it's, it's little things like that, that really do validate you as a PC and being in such a leadership position. And those little campers will, are, who are now pretty much grown up campers will oh always gosh, remember yeah. that from their first summers of camp, which is something oh, really yeah. special. Definitely. And I think it's something to be said, like, as a PC who wasn't in a schmata, and I still had the most amazing four days. And because you are so happy for your friends who are orange monsters. Like I will never forget the moment getting a paper. Our color wear broke at the fun run mm -hmm. and we were sitting in group That's line fun. and I remember getting the paper and I had no idea what team I was on. It didn't matter because the names in bold are your best friends and you grew up with them. And I saw Laz's name and I was bawling. And if you know me, you know, I'm definitely the crier <laughs> of Blue Ridge and I'm emotional and that's okay. And if you are emotional, great. If you're not, that's fine too. But for a PC who wasn't in a schmata, it's equally as special because you take part in all the things that make PC color, PC color. You play in your PC basketball game. Your name's announced when you go onto the court. You are watching your friends stand on a chair and learn their songs and you're going to listen to yeah, them sure. after like, they're singing in the mess hall. And if they're not there, then you're going to say, yeah, Julia, yeah, Lazarus, which is what we do when <laughs> someone leads their song. Like, that's really cool. Really that's cool. just really cool that 
then there's songs that are from your PC color war. And like, I remember one of my counselors saying to me, leave your legacy in the number 13, because we were PCs in 2013. And that really stuck with me for PC color war, because it didn't matter if you were in a schmata, it didn't matter if you had a right. megaphone, all that mattered was that you were leading camp and you were shining and yeah. you were showing that outpouring of love for Blue Ridge. And yeah. that's all. And for those of you who are about to experience your first summer at Blue Ridge or um, are a parent yes. watching and you um, kind of don't know what hit you with this conversation, a couple of vocabulary words to go over. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. An oversized shirt um, that the counselors who are leading the teams paint um, in secret um, for the campers that are going to be leading their teams. Um, and they just appear when Call of War breaks and nobody knows what they've, what they've done. Um, and then their names go on them and then they walk around with them on as almost like a celebration of um, this being the role that they have. Um, and when Lindsay and Julia refer to their songs, it is a song that they um, led first, whether it was as a counselor chief, which we'll talk about a little later, um, or as a camper chief that have been created by the um, counselors leading their teams um, that will forever be known as their song, the song that they lead. Um, and Lindsay referred to um, the names in bold on the paper and the leaders of the teams are um, in, written in bold when the color or papers also, again, surprise, appear. <laughs> um, so you'll know when you are at camp and you'll see, um, oh, the bold names, you know, now I know what that means. Um, and that's something that kids learn very early on and they're always looking for. Um, that yeah. as they grow up. Um, so as campers, you both formed really strong bonds with your counselors. With What's something you took away from a counselor that has made you a better counselor in your counselor years? So my <laughs> immediate summer, um, I think this, yeah, this counselor definitely taught me the most for me being a counselor now. Danny Glantz was my counselor <laughs> immediate summer. Um, every Whenever I told someone, like, yeah, like, Danny Glance is my counselor, like, you're so lucky, like, oh, my God. Um, you know, I didn't know her, like, that well, but her being my counselor was unbelievable. She was always just so involved, like, had so much fun with us and, you know, joined in with our humor, even, you know, whatever it was, no matter how silly it was. Um, but something that really did stick with me is she was always there to talk to you, you know, if you were having an off day, if you were homesick, you know, she was always there to talk to you and she would really treat you like, I mean, she would really bring you outside and, you know, talk with you and make you feel better. And, you know, even if you were having an off day and you kept it to yourself, she was so intuitive in the fact that she would come up to you, she would bring you outside and just be like, so like, what's up? And I think that's something that really transcended to me as a counselor, you know, every time I notice if a camper is having an off day or if they're homesick, you know, you know, you, I'm the first to go to them sometimes and be like, what's up? Do you want to talk? And I think that's something that is really meaningful to me and meaningful to like the campers that I've had. And one thing I know I always remember about Julia as a counselor and her counselor years just watching her is that she would always say that one of her favorite things, um, it's just be weird with them. Like I just oh make sure that so I can weird. be weird with. And I always see her being weird with her campers. And yeah. I always know that that's something also that I'm, obviously I um, knew Danny growing up as well. And she would be, she knew when it was time to be silly and time to be serious. And yeah. she would just be weird with I loved it all the that's, time. Yep. Yeah. When, <laughs> Even if she didn't find it funny, she just yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> just <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> 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 sure. Um, I think for me, something that I learned, I mean, I say it all the time. I'm, I was really fortunate to form really close relationships with a bunch of my counselors to this day to have been invited to their weddings and be told that I'm going to be the first one they call when they have a baby to be the babysitter mm -hmm. and things like that. And what I learned from Emily Pfeffer and Wendy Ginsburg and Iana Mossberg and Danny Glantz, who's also my counselor, was that you have to form an individual relationship with each camper. And if you know your campers and you know the things that make them happy, the things that make them scared, the things that make them, that will freak them out and all these things, your relationship with them isn't gonna last just for seven weeks. And I remember when I became a JC, um, to my campers, I had all these, like I was friendly with a lot of girls throughout camp. Like it's just who I am. I kind of. Mm -hmm 
make friends in random age groups and they would come and sit on my bed. And I remember my campers saying to me when they were cadets and they turned to me and they said, I can't wait to be your old camper so I can sit on your bed and tell your new campers about what it's like to have you as a counselor. My counselor said to me in camp, like, this doesn't stop here. When you go home and I, when I was home and I was in a fight with my best friend, I didn't have an older sister. So I called my counselors and that's something really special that Blue Ridge gives you because I don't think every single one of my home friends can say that about their counselors and say no. that they were so involved and so they care so much. And I care so much about my campers. Mm -hmm. It's very clear. Um, I was fortunate enough to watch my campers grow up for the past five years. I moved up with them and had almost every bunk in the age group mm -hmm. just out of nowhere. It kind of just happened. Um, and when you get to the point where you're watching a kid who used to be so scared of X, so scared of loud sounds, and now they're running like, okay. like, oh. <laughs> like me, yeah. yes. Um, <laughs> seriously. So um, scared. Yeah, and now they're running <laughs> when color war breaks. When color war breaks, there's three booms of a cannon. That's how we know that color war breaks. And you see that camper that would sit there with headphones on so scared, running towards it. It's like, you watch your kid. Like, I don't know what it's like to have a kid, but I think this is pretty close. Yeah, um, I've heard a lot about this from you guys already about um, creating your own legacies. Lindsay said, create her legacy in the 13. You'll see, you can see it right now on her sleeve that that's the year that she was a um, piece of <laughs> something that we do um, during Color Wars. When you're a counselor leading a team, you get a number on the side of your um, shirt that shows what year you were a PC, what year you celebrated and graduated, basically. Um, and you know, we have the opportunity to do those things. And some people are, you know, are a lot like they are at home. And you can say, oh, yeah, that, you know, that's that person. And sometimes people have, you know, they just get so happy at camp and they're able to um, kind of like change who they are in a, the best possible way. And it carries on um, while they're at home. Um, and what is something that is so on brand um, for you that you want kids, even those that weren't directly your campers, um, to look back and say, remember when Julia Lazarus, like, you know, did this or remember Lindsay Simon made me laugh so hard. What are some yeah. of those things that, um, that you do that you want campers to remember? Like the, would you rap me and Lindsay would oh, ask, yeah. would you rather like, yeah. how many times a day, Lindsay? Like 20? Every group line up and multiple group line up. Every <laughs> time we had some off time, you know, before going to the amphitheater for a show or whatever it was, Iana would line them up. And sometimes me and Lindsay would be a little silly. And, you know, we would do like the, ready? Should we do it? Like the, would you rather? Yeah. One, two, three. You know, would you rather? Would you rather? Um, and we would, like, would you rather? And all the campers say, like, would you rather? And then we would just think of the weirdest would you rathers. And we'd be like, okay, hands up for this one, hands up for this one. And it's just something like they, found so in like fun and intriguing that we would do it and think of these like weird would you rather is like am I wrong Lindsay <laughs> we would ask like would you rather have fingers as toes or toes as <laughs> yeah. fingers I remember oh my god wait fingers as toes or toes as fingers yeah, I think fingers as toes exactly <laughs> right and Amy what do you think yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> probably. Fingers as toes. I want my hands, you know. To... <laughs> Me too. I want my hands. But yeah. I remember that one specifically, and I will say that um, even as someone who's older than you guys, um, to always remember that about you will be really special. And I know some of you, both of you also have a couple of signature things that are just all you. Um, Lindsay, I'm thinking of the way you sing in the night. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah. I was about to say. <laughs> um, I, I tend to... Even though Iana Mossberg tells me that the way to project your voice is to not look to the sky, um, I believe it helps. So if I put my hands behind my back every meal and sing like this and look to the sky just because I can. So yeah, would you rathers and the way you sing. And I will add also that the two of you um, do birthday cartwheels. Oh, yeah. um, every morning at lineup when it's somebody's birthday we have a whole camp lineup every day every morning and after the whole camp sings their birthday song um julia and lindsay um will go on either side of Lori, who's making all the announcements and 
do cartwheels in front of the whole camp to celebrate uh, however many birthdays there are. If there are three birthdays, they do three cartwheels. And, you know, every day the expressions on their faces and the kids just really look forward um, to seeing those birthday cartwheels. So get, get ready for that. If you can not great. Them. They're not very good. <laughs> so you guys were counselor chief last summer of Color War. Tell us about your preparations for that color war, both individually and together. Um, I think I found I figured out my theme first. I want to say yes, yes, um, yes. I figured it out first. I had um, I knew what camp meant to me, and I wanted to basically. I had my message, and I knew that camp made me a stronger person, and it taught me to be brave. And it, I. I'm a kid at heart and I was petrified to grow up and little did I know every day at camp I was growing up and that's basically what I wanted to um, give off in Grey Marvel. Like I knew, Laz is an art major and I knew for her so when we prepare for color war we get to make scenery that decorates the mess hall and it's a secret, just magically appears. <laughs> Yeah. But um, I knew that for Laz, that that was going to be the most important thing to her. So we sat there and we figured out her designs and I sat there with her and Googled and oh. tried to figure it out because, yeah, yeah <laughs> that, that design on her shirt took, took forever. so long. It took <laughs> so long. <laughs> and I think that's the beauty of having us grow up together and being best friends is that we know what was so important to the other and to yeah. share that experience with her and for her to know what, what was important to me was very special. But in like very planning. important that when you're planning color war as a counselor, a team that you have a message that you want to pass down um, through the campers on your team. So yeah. Julie, keep going. Tell yeah. Us. I mean, for me, I, have always been someone that's been very into, you know, sports day at camp. It's one of my favorite days. It's kind of like um, the campers are split up into college teams and you compete in games like yeah. ultimate frisbee. You know, if you have never played that before, it's, it's so much fun. Um, but I love the school I go to. Me and Lindsay both go to Michigan. You know, I've always been a rah-rah, love cheering, love you know, cheering on my team and just being proud of something I represent. So it was pretty easy for me to realize I wanted it to be something that has to do with like colleges and, you know, game day and things like that. So I came up with game day. And for me, I knew that it was just going to get everyone excited because even if you don't have that relationship, you know, to a college, you know, it's kind of representing that whatever community, whatever school, whatever sports team that you're a part of, it's so important to be so proud of something you represent. And for me, that's, you know, my school, Michigan, and for a common thread throughout the entire camp, that's Blue Ridge, you know, everyone's cheering on Blue Ridge, you know, being proud in their blue and gray. Part of what um, makes our color war so special is that we have at the end um, is color war sing. Um, it's everyone's favorite. Um, summer and favorite part of the summer um, and that follows actually some speeches by the campers and counselors leading the team and I remember saying in mine when I was a counselor um, counselor chief I remember saying um, that color worsening is the night that really solidifies um, our shared experience and everybody's bonds together each team sings four songs um, a march a new alma mater an old alma mater and a cheer um, and, you know, different people lead the songs, like I was mentioning before. Um, campers lead a couple of them, but then the counselors lead their old alma mater. Um, but one of the most special times, I think, when you're a counselor chief is getting to write or help write your new alma mater, because it really is, um, talks about what camp means to you and the message that you're passing on. So I've pulled a line from each of your alma maters that I think um, kind of helps people to understand um, what you're all about in your camp life. Um, so I'm going to go blue then gray and Julia, I picked out for you. Um, those summer nights are ending will still be true. Joy given we are sending gratitude for all you do. And I remember when Julia heard it the first time, um, yes. I remember her tears oh. were just so real. <laughs> and, and I'm just wondering what that line means to you. Oh my God. I mean, I remember Iana sitting me down and she asked me, you know, what do you want this album on to be? You know, Iana writes a lot of songs. Yeah, Iana writes a lot of songs. <laughs> She's a group head. 
Um, and for me, you know, camp is so important for so many reasons. You know, it taught me the lessons I've learned today. It's, you know, my safe haven. But the one thing I really wanted to, you know, drive home in my alma mater was the fact of really being grateful for having this place. Um, I mean, a lot of campers, a lot of counselors forget that having camp is such a blessing. And, you know, not everyone has, you know, the opportunity to go to a special place like this every summer. Um, and for me, you know, I am grateful every day that my parents were able to send me to camp and I was able to really live through my camper years, you know, all seven, eight years I was a camper. Um, you know, and it's something that I really do think about every day at camp, you know, how grateful I am to be at summer camp and how, you know, it's such a privilege and they get upset about losing a soccer game or they get in a little argument with a friend. But at the end of the day, you know, it's all about like being so grateful to have this place. And, you know, it's just, I don't know, I'm forever grateful to have these years at Blue Ridge. And for Lindsay, um, I picked out Lessons we've learned at Camp Blue Ridge guide us though our paths may stray. Impact is clear as the ending draws near and our memories won't fade away. And I honestly, for both of these songs, I could have gone on and on with the beautiful yeah. language that is in it. Um, Lindsay, take a deep breath. Try not to uh, <laughs> break down here. Yeah. We'll <laughs> tell, tell us about that line and what it means to you. <laughs> um, well, that line actually if I were to pick a line, it would be the same one. Um, when So as we said, Iana wrote our songs and we actually both work for her. We both are senior assistant group heads. So she, Iana was, all, we grew up with her and she knew for me um, that my whole message was the people make the place, mm. but the place also is the reason I have the people. And that was what I needed to show in my songs and that the impact that Blue Ridge has had on me is more than any other place in my life. And I have my best friends because of Blue Ridge and I've grown up because of Blue Ridge. And if you were to ask the people, my counselors, like I was a good kid, but I wasn't this person. And I think that I've matured and I have become confident and become a leader and can be silly and can be serious because of Blue Ridge. And those, the, the, as it says in the line, the impact is clear. And I think that it's important to take away that as counselor chief, I wanted to show my team and the rest of the camp and the judges and everyone who was up at camp that we are, Blue Ridge is a part of all of us, but at the same time, you're a part of Blue Ridge. Mm -hmm. And just, camp has had the impacts on you, but you also make a mark on camp. And I'm privileged that I've made it this far to make this true impact. But I think that everyone has to realize that no matter if it's your first summer, your fifth summer, or your 50th summer, you leave a mark on Blue Ridge. And that's really special. And that's really, you can't say that for everything you do, but you can say it when you walk onto camp. And it's, it's, it, it feels yeah. my heart and I get emotional, but yeah. um, so it's clear from what you're both saying, um, from how I feel, from how um, our community is going to feel when they watch this, um, that Blue Ridge and Equinunk have had a significant impact on all of our lives. Um, how will you take this experience um, moving forward? I mean, for me, it's, you know, camp has impacted me for every, every single year I've been at Blue Ridge, outside of camp, I've always been impacted. Um, but I'm actually not going into any education field. I'm a graphic design major. So even if the time comes where I physically can't come back anymore because I need to get a job, <laughs> I think that camp is really, really going to impact me for like the rest of my life you know it's the little things from being in the car and hearing a song and every time no matter if it's a sophomore song that I didn't even I wasn't even a sophomore during that sing I'd be like oh my gosh like, this is a camp song you know everyone watching this can relate to that you know every time you hear a song you're like oh my god like that's camp song you know um but really going forward every time that you know, I'm having a bad day, or even if I'm not having a bad day, I always have 
my cam friends to be there for me and give me that gut belly laugh that I really can't get from anyone else. Like, every camper here knows exactly what I'm talking about. You know, you have these like gut laughs with your camp friends. They, they're just so unexplainable. And I think throughout my life, I mean, you know, my daughters and sons are definitely going to it, you know, no question about that. Um, but camp is just always going to be there for me. Even when others might not be there for me, I know that at the end of the day, I always have camp, you know. And I think for me, who is going into education and wants yeah. to be a teacher <laughs> and is lucky enough that that lets me come back to camp for as long as Lori, Cheryl, and Adam, <laughs> and Richie will have me, um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I have been taught how to care for children. And I think that our motto is wholesome, inclusive, and nurturing, and we focus yeah. on child care. And those are the things that teach you how to be, I'm caring for another person's child. And that impact, like that, that's the life lesson that you're not going to learn without doing it. And I think doing it in the safe environment where I've learned from the people who cared for me is really special and has taught me that there's a specific, there's a way, there's a way about it that you, to care for someone else's kid and to show them that it's this, you are important to me and I'm going to show that how you're important to me by caring for you and making you feel special and making you feel like you're unique and one of a kind in this big world. Yeah, but also it's that like, you're part of a group and you can, you can be part yeah. of groups that you choose. I think that's really exactly. important, yeah. special. Um, and with that, um, you know, it's obvious to me that you both have um, left your mark and left your legacy on our um, shared special place and shared special experience. Um, and we thank you so much for sharing with us today. This has been a really special experience and hope to see you um, sooner than we think. And for summer, summer 20. Final last word. Fingers crossed. Uh, uh, <laughs> go blue. Go blue. Go blue. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.